Hi everyone, I'm Andy Barney, The Sewing Doc, and today I want to teach you a little trick that I always teach um, in my Know Better, Sew Better Guild lecture, and I also teach it in my classes, specifically the free motion quilting class, um, but you'll probably see this tip pop up in all my classes because it's a good one. I, again, I take no credit for this. Um, from what I understand, this is a Sharon Chamber um, tip originally. I did uh, get this tip from her uh, personally when I took a class with her in 2000. 14, I believe. Um, but I first heard about um, lubricating your thread. In this case, I'm going to, we're going to focus on cotton thread um, from Lynn Reinhardt of the Stitch TV show. Uh, she was teaching a basic uh, machine applique class, I believe, to our guild uh, about eight years ago. And she had recently heard of this tip from Sharon Chamber in a class that she took and passed it on to us. So we went to lunch between our guild meeting and our class and she told us about this trick and we all thought she was crazy. So about seven or eight of us went over to Publix and we all purchased a bottle of mineral oil. Um, this is just, I think, $1.50, $2 that you can get in any grocery store, Walmart, Kmart, um, Target, any store that you, that um, just carries general stuff. Um, very cheap. In fact, the bottle that I bought at Publix back then, I think I still have it. I just bought a second bottle um, because I do so many demonstrations now. So just regular old mineral oil. And what we're going to do is we're going to lubricate our cotton thread. Now, Sharon says that she lubricates all of her threads, silk, polyester, cotton, everything. I personally only do this for cotton thread. I've really not had a reason to do it to my silk or my polyester thread. So um, the reason you want to lubricate your thread is because cotton dries out. Uh, I, being a quilter, I probably spend more money on thread than I do on uh, fabric. So I would really like to be able to put a wall up that has all of my thread on it. Quick grab, I can see it. And also the, all the rainbow colors, who doesn't love that? The problem is, is whenever you keep your thread um, open to the elements, especially um, if you live in a dry climate, um, it will dry out your thread, which means it will snap, it will break easier, it's just not as durable. When you lubricate your thread though, it's gonna help cut down on the amount of lint. Now, orophil is already extremely low on lint, but I guarantee you when you lubricate your thread, you will see almost no trace of lint whatsoever. So it tames the lint, but also when you put this in your quilt, it's gonna have much more durability because rather than a dry piece of thread that can snap or wear down, the lubrication is gonna keep it a little more hardy and, um, and and even inside your quilt. Now the number one question of course um, that I get is, is the oil going to transfer to my fabric? No. I promise you when you lubricate your thread that whenever you go to sew with it, it's not going to put oil on your fabric. It's not going to leave stains. It's not going to cause any issues whatsoever with your fabric. Um, and on, on that note, the amount of time you need to let it soak in, I would say is at least 30 minutes. Typically what I do when I buy a brand new spool is I will go ahead and dip it as soon as I get home and then it's sitting there and waiting whether it's a day or a week or a month. It's already ready. I do this on my thread so I just do it as soon as I get them. If I had to run to the store and get a new thing of thread, then I am probably going to dip it and let it sit for about 30 minutes. At that point, it's definitely usable. Um, also on the large spools, which I don't think... I don't have one handy, but uh, on, I do buy the big Orofil um, 7,000 yard spools. Uh, you need a bigger container to dip that in and it's only going to soak about halfway. And then whenever it's running through your machine, you can hear an actual difference between the lubricated thread and the dry thread. And then you'll just take your spool out, re-dip it, and um, and then it's going to re-lubricate. So you would just you do as much thread as it's going to soak into. So let's go and uh, let me show you how you do this, okay? Okay, so what I have here, this is just a little st uh, styrofoam bowl that's disposable. This is typically what I use when I do my demos. Um, but what I did long term was um, that same day that we went to Publix and we all bought a bottle of mineral oil, we bought a, um, a container of those little disposable um containers like the, uh, I think Rubbermaid makes them and uh, Ziploc makes them, but something that will seal up nicely. You can leave the oil in there. You can use this oil over and over, which is why one bottle has managed to last me eight years. In fact, I, I would venture to guess that a bottle of mineral oil is going to last you a lifetime if you use it right. But for today's purposes, we're just going to use the styrofoam bowl. And then of course I have my mineral oil and we're going to just pour enough in there to get our, um, thread moist. Okay, 
I also have here a piece of scrap fabric. Um, paper towels work very well for this. This is just what I have handy at the moment. So I'm going to take my first spool. This is uh, just regular green Orifil, brand new um, spool. What we want to be careful with is when we go to dip this, we're not going to want to disturb the threads on the spool. So we're literally just going to dip this in there, and yes, it's going to be yucky. So you can see the threads looks like it's going to change colors because it's wet and it's pretty gross. So just make sure you do this all the way around on the edge. Okay, and you can see now it's dripping off it, but it is soaking in. If actually, if I turn this and you see the top here, I don't know if you can really see that in this light, but it's dark where there's oil and it's light where there's not. So just make sure you got good coverage. Um, let the excess drip off a little bit. And then I'm gonna go over here to this fabric and just kind of roll it out a little bit and get some of that excess off there without disturbing the threads. Then we're just gonna set this over here and I'm gonna do the same thing now with the yellow one. I'm gonna go ahead and dip this in there. And this works with any size bowl. You just might have to take your container up a size to accommodate, but this bowl works great for this. Um, and make sure you don't lose the end of your thread here. Okay. And I'm going to let those sit and soak in. Okay, so now we are about 30 minutes later, and I want to show you the spools that I just dipped. Um, and here is a good example. This is what I can show you that I was trying to show you the other way. This is the green, and as you can see, the oil has soaked in. And as I said earlier, you're going to be able to see the dark part is the lubricated thread. The light is the non-lubricated. And because these th spools are a little thicker, it's going to soak in so far, and then you'll be sewing along and all of a sudden you're going to hear a bit of a change in your sewing machine when you hit the non-lubricated thread. Nothing's wrong, nothing scary, but it's going to indicate to you that the thread is just having more resistance moving through your machine. And the same thing on the yellow. This is the yellow one. Okay. And I want to show you, this is a, th this is a spool that I dipped a long, long time ago. And I can always tell if they've been dipped or not. Actually, let me grab another one. If you look at the bottom of this one, if you can see, it's pretty consistent. Um, this one was not dipped. This one was, and you can see there's a little bit of like an oily ring there. There is no oil, so it's not wet, moist, or greasy. It's just that it kind of discolors the label, um, which it helps me to remember which ones have been dipped and which ones haven't. So, okay, so that now you can see, and if you feel this, you can't feel anything in this. I promise you this is not going to leave any residue in your machine or your or your. Uh, fabric. And I know that's the number one concern. Um, what it is going to do is going to move through your machine better uh, and prevent all the breaks and the things we talked about earlier. Okay. Uh, and the other question I get with this is, is this harmful to your machine? Is absolutely not harmful. The oil goes into your thread, affects only the thread. It's not going to leave any residue or trace of it in your machine. So this is, um, this. I highly recommend this. If you don't do this, you're not going to ruin your quilts, but I can guarantee you your experience is going to be much easier, especially if you are a fan of Guterman or, or Mettler, both of which are good, um, high quality, um, long staple cotton, which you want to use in your quilts, but um, they are extra linty. They are more linty than um, Orifil. You will see a huge reduction in the lint if you can, um, if you will do this method. So that's how you lubricate your thread. Um, I will mention also that there are a few people that just really are turned off by this whole method. I, even if you're not on board with, with, uh, dipping your thread is what we call it. You can even take a, um, a thing of pure sewing machine oil and run little strips along here so that it's not quite as overwhelming as actually dipping it into oil. Any lubrication you can get in here is going to help your thread. So if you have any questions about dipping your thread or lubricating your thread, anything like that, please let us know. We have the comments below. You can also follow us on all of our videos on sewingdoc.com. Com. And if you're in the Atlanta area, stop in and see us at Red Hint Stitch Shop. And we look forward to meeting you. Thank you.